it's a hot day, or maybe you don't have your windows open, have your fan on. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning, welcome to Lyft. Uh, as we just kind of explained to the guys coming this morning, uh, this is going to be a little bit of what we've kind of been doing this week, a bit of light and shade, a bit of yin and yang. Um, bit of uh, kind of flow and strength in our movement and how that can affect our mood or how our mood can affect our, our movement. So it goes both ways and, and really identifying what we need for our body on every day. Do we need something a little bit more nurturing, a little bit more flowing? Or do, do we need something to kind of get us going? Uh, is our mood kind of affecting our get up and go? Uh, so hopefully this will inspire you a little bit to uh, move the way you feel good. So I just want you to stand with your just feet underneath the hips where you feel comfortable to be. And just take a little check in. Just gonna put the microphone on so you can hear me better. Take a little check in. How the body's feeling right now. Okay, some of you have said you're feeling quite good and positive and energetic and ready to go. Some of you are feeling kind of tired and maybe a bit lethargic. So just take a note as you take a few breaths in, how your emotions are today. How your body is feeling, is it feeling heavy? Is it feeling light? Is it feeling tired in certain places? Is it feeling sore? Is it feeling really positive and um, energetic and light? So just kind of notice that as you stand and kind of root yourself through the floor and send your body up and away. So it's like your legs are trees rooting into the ground and the rest of you is coming up and the branches and the leaves are bursting out. So there's a feeling of width across the chest and, and lift, but not tension. It's a light lift through the body. And I want you to start with just reaching the arms forward and up, taking a nice breath in and feeling the front of you really elongate so right from the shins through the knees through the thighs through the hips through the belly right under the armpits and then take this with time and where you feel comfortable the back of the body opening up so coming into a little roll down the knees can be bent go where you feel comfortable you don't have to go all the way down okay so go to where it feels good and then roll up so really feel for your body, what does it like to do? Does it like to open this front of you? Are you a little bit stuck here in your belly or your hips or your arms? And how does it feel to bend the back of you? Maybe you're a little bit tighter in the back of the legs or the back of the spine or the back of the neck. And roll back up. And reach. And we talked about this place in the front being quite vulnerable, open maybe more confident, more available, and how closing the front and opening the back can feel very nurturing. Maybe I want to close myself in, hide under the duvet. Um, close yourself off from the world. So do that one more time and feel maybe where you need to be or where you want to be. Feel that big, fascial, elastic feeling from under the foot, over the back of the heels, all the way up the back of the legs. And just only go where you feel comfortable. Okay, now we're going to make it a little bit stronger. So we're going to inhale up, exhale, chop down. Inhale up, chop bend the knees. So from the side, I'm just going where it feels comfortable. So nice, strong breath. If you don't like that pattern, keep going with the flow. Two more. And release it down. So if anything doesn't feel good, go back to the flow. If you like the energetic stuff, stay with that. Okay, there's no rules. So the second pattern is a little bit of a wider stance. It's inspired from kind of Tai Chi. So if anyone's done Tai Chi, you might be going, hell, that's not how it goes. <laughs> this is my version. So find where it feels comfortable. It doesn't have to be super stretched. And you're just going to start to push uh, the arms over, going towards your bent leg side. 
It's like you're pushing water. So you're just going to flow that water over to the one side. And as you push that water there, you're just going to put a little bit of weight on that one. So go wherever feels good. Okay, your legs might go wider apart, they might go narrower apart, you might not bend that much, but there is a little bend in the leg. And also feel as you're pushing that imaginary water across, that there's a little feeling of elasticity in the inner thigh of the straight leg. So I'm just flowing, feeling like I'm in water, pushing that water across, pushing that water. Imagine you were doing um, like an aqua fitness class and you were just standing in the water and feeling that little light resistance. So this is the push. Okay, the opposite of that is the pull. So we're gonna go over to the side. We're gonna imagine that we're pulling uh, a tugboat in, but it's still very flowing. And then I'm gonna lean onto that side and pull my tugboat. So we're still in the water, but now we're kind of pulling our little motorboat or our canoe or whatever weight you feel like you want, but I'm pulling that in. So leaning over, pulling that in. Leaning over, pulling that in. So I'm always going over to the leg and then I'm pulling it back to the middle. So two more of those. And then come back to the center. Now you can stay with that if you like, if that felt really good. What we're now going to do is a push and a pull. So I'm going to push over to the left, pull back to the middle. Push over to the right, pull back to the middle. Strong and beautiful. So maybe the waves are a little bit harder and you're working through your core a little bit more. If it doesn't feel good to go strong, take it back to the light. Just do a few more, whatever feels good for you today. And then come back to center. Feel how that is? Okay, did the energetic bit feel good? Did it feel better to flow? Let's come to a squat position. And this is very uh, literal of kind of the weight of our shoulders, the weight of the world on our shoulders. So we're gonna feel that when we squat down, like we're holding a big heavy weight. So we're just gonna have the hands on the shoulders. Now make sure when you squat here that the weight is back in the heels and we're not pushing the weight forward to the knees. But it doesn't have to be deep, okay? So we're not looking for necessarily a deep squat. You can go into a deep squat, that's good, that's great, but that's not what it's about. So I want you to feel this heaviness on your shoulders, and then one arm is going to go up, feel light through your body. So a little side bend. Weight on the shoulders, light the other way. So one arm reach. Weight heavy. Weight light. Okay, so think of that in your life when you felt the burden of maybe the world or your family or just worry, and for this moment, can we send all that negative energy out the room? Now from here, and if that feels okay, if it doesn't keep going to what we were just doing, you're gonna circle that arm around, bend the knees, and then roll yourself back up through the center. So little squat, reach up and over, that arm continues to flow across the body, and around and down, and then roll back up. So if that part doesn't feel good, keep doing the squat with the reach. You don't have to add the little bend and flow. Only do that if that feels good on your body. One more. And up. And flow. And come back. Feel free to stay with this. We're going to go into the energetic one now. So we're going to come down way of the shoulders. Reach up. In. Reach up to the side. So both arms reaching, both arms reaching, really push through the earth, really lift through your body, feel like you've got a crate on your shoulders and you're throwing it to the sky, go with the soft one if you want for a few more, you feel what feels right for you today, last two, last one, and then release. So maybe because Allison's done this twice, see what it feels like today versus the other day. It might be different. I felt very energetic on Monday, I feel very flowy today. Okay, 
So we're going to go into a little warrior stance. And I love the word warrior. It kind of makes me feel strong and rooted and balanced. Okay, so decide which leg you want forward. Have a little moment here. The back leg is on the ball of the foot. My knee is over my heel. So you decide how far apart this is, but try not to be too close where you kind of can't push that leg back a little bit. If you're on a mat, feel like you're pushing your front foot forward on the mat and the back foot back, so there's an energy between them. That push and pull again is quite important in our life. Okay, so we're gonna flow the arms up, very similar to our first exercise, where we lengthen the front of the body. Now in this one, if you can get a little bit of a pelvic tilt as you go up, that'd be great. And then we're gonna feel like we're pulling something down from the ceiling and hollowing the belly and just rounding a bit over that leg. So inhale to come up, take the breath in, and hollow the belly, and just bring the hands kind of by your hips. And inhale up. And exhale, nice and slowing down. And just checking in with the elasticity of yourself, so feeling very elastic with this. Here we go to the dynamic state with the flow if you want. Up and down, reach up, strong down, push and pull, push and pull. A few more, go back to the flow if you want. One more. Woo. And my bum is on fire there. And I feel warm. So hopefully you're feeling the body warming up. So let's go to the other side. Okay, so just take a moment to root yourself in this position. Okay, to get on the ball of the foot of the back foot and the knee over the heel. You decide how far apart that is for you, okay? So you feel as balanced as you can. Okay, then take it at a pace that works for you. Up, and nice and flowing down, hollowing the belly. So there's a feeling of stretching the front of you. And just make sure when the arms go up, you feel almost like they're coming from your back. Coming up, and feeling that elastic. That little tilt of the pelvis, if that feels good. We'll do one more flow. But feel free to keep going with that if that serves you today. Here we go. Strong warrior pull. Strong push and pull. You're throwing those kind of weights up and then you're pulling a core down. Two more. One, and then bring it in. Oh, and see how you feel. Take some water if you need to. So I'm gonna add one more thing here that's gonna relate to what comes a little bit later. So we're gonna just have one leg a little bit back. Uh, so you might wanna go onto the first leg we did for the warrior. And I want you to just bring the other leg up, up and just tap the hand to the knee. And just see if you can kind of hold that and lift up into a nice standing posture. And then just lower down to just a little mini bend. Okay? So nothing crazy. So we push through that standing leg, tap the hand into the knee. You can put this hand wherever you like to help you and then just coming down into a little bend. And notice that my arms are just going kind of in opposition. So I've got my right leg forward, my left arm is gonna kind of come forward. So I'm just going opposite, hand to knee, opposite, down. Nice and slow flow. Two, nice and tall. One more. Stay with that if you like, if you're working on your balance. You're gonna don't throw it away too much. And you might even be able to go elbow to knee. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Strong, core centered, 
Okay, so we're gonna go cat stretch flow. Once we get there, we're gonna hover the knees. Three, two, one, come back. And then we're gonna go into the extension, find the flow, rest, hover, three, two, one, come down, and then back to flat foot. We'll do that one more time. Curve so you can stay with the flow. Hover, three, two, one, and then come into the extension, shoulder the blades on your back, nice length in position. Hover, three, two, one, and then come back, rest the wrists. And we're just going to do something while we're here on the mat. I wasn't going to do this, but I think we'll do it now before we get back up again. So let's come down onto the back. If you need a headlock behind your head, please use it. Um, we're going to do kind of a little core, kind of focus one. We're going to kind of feel a little bit of a flow, and then we're going to kind of get a little bit more dynamic with it. All right? So come into your neutral position. Tilt your pelvis. Find where that sacrum is really supported on the mat. And you can feel that the back of your ribs are really centered and then your pelvis is nice and centered in the middle. You're gonna float one leg to tabletop and just let that leg fall into your hip. Let the other leg come to tabletop and really feel that you're grounded, centered, really connected to your deep abdominals. I'm not pulling them strongly in, but I feel like the weight of the body is really centered in my pelvis. So my legs are light, my pelvis is heavy. Okay? We're just going to go to keeping the legs tabletop, the arms overhead, and then circling around. I want you to think like you're in water. Your feet can be dropped if you need to. So the arms go overhead. And then we're pushing the water around. Now we want to make sure that when the arms go overhead and they circle, there's no crunching or clunking. So you've got to feel space in your shoulder and feel the movement in your shoulder blades. So make sure you've got enough room to do that. Okay, and I'm trying to keep my pelvis really, really rooted and centered. Okay, so now as the arms go overhead, we're going to try and let one leg go forward. And then as we circle the arms, the leg's going to come in. Then the other leg, keeping that pelvis centered, and circle around. And reach. And circle. So don't let the leg go too low if it starts to become heavy. Okay, it's when it becomes heavy, that we will lose connection to our core muscles. So one more on each side, and around. Last one, and around. And then just hug the legs in, or stretch the legs out, whatever you feel you need to come out of that. Okay, now we're gonna make this a little bit sharper, a little bit more energetic. And you'll have the option to come up into flexion, I'm going to choose not to today because I still feel like my neck is, uh, is not happy, okay? So now we're going to kind of do it a little bit stronger, less kind of flowy, um, but don't let lose the, the connection to your shoulders, okay? So legs back and tabletop. I'm going to take our arms, actually we're going to go bent, okay? And I'm going to go reaching arm and leg, and then you have the option of going up. Reaching arm and leg and up. Reach and up. Actually, it feels okay today, but if that doesn't feel okay, just here. Strong and in. Strong and in. And up. Reach and up. Two more. And then release it down and just open up the front of you. Take a moment. And then when you're ready, just roll yourself up to standing. And for this first sequence, we don't need any weight, just you and your body. 
We're going to be in standing for the first exercise, and then we're going to come down to the knees for the second exercise. So what I'm going to do is do it really flowing first, and then the second round, you'll have the option to stay flowing or to go dynamic with me. Okay, so take a sip of water. Now I'm going to kind of teach you for the first bit, and then um, and then we'll kind of speed it up a little bit more once you've kind of mastered it. So it's kind of similar to our last little exercise that we did, where we did the balance and then the down, but we're going to add a little step across. Okay, so let's use right leg swirl together. So I'm going to lift that right leg up, and you can either tap his hand or just come into an opposite arm and leg. So reaching up nice and tall, step back. Then the right leg steps over, and we reach the arms over, kind of like the push of the Tai Chi. And then I step over the other way, push of the Tai Chi. Okay, now I'm ready to go again with that right leg. Come up, step back, and I'm going to step my right leg, Step out, push. Step out, push. Okay? Hopefully we got that. So let's go right up and down. Step right. Step left. Right up. Right back. Step right. Step left. And up, nice and tall. Down. Push side. Push side, and up, strong, beautiful, flowing, right up, right back, step right, step left, one more, and back, my bum is on fire, okay, now I think we're probably going to feel better doing the left side, before we go down to the floor. Okay, hopefully we coordinated that. <laughs> so start with your left leg back. Okay, start it slow. So left leg's gonna come up, opposite arm. Remember you can do a tap if it's too much to lift it up. Step that leg back a little then, it doesn't have to be major big. Left leg steps out and we push. Right leg, we're back to where we started. So we go up left leg, back left leg, step out to the left, step to the right. Up we go. And back. Step side, step side. Lift all through the core. Down, side, side. And up. Back, side, push to the right. Last one, up, back, push, push. Nice guys. Okay, so that's our exercise one. We've done it in flow. Exercise two is a kneeling plank on the hands. Now if you don't want to be on the hands, you can be on your elbows, okay? But it's going to be a little bit harder to do this. What you might want to do is go elbows. Up to hands, and then back down to elbows. Okay, but you can manage being on your hands. We're going to tilt the pelvis to 12, and we're going to tap the shoulder. Now, I have to really connect my core first. So lifting the belly, oh, that's quite hard. Okay, if you feel that you can't go to the elbow or to the shoulder, just see if you can come down onto your elbows and then back up onto your hands. Okay, so we're just touching shoulder to shoulder, really keeping inner thighs connected, bottom ribs, just do a few more. And release. Okay, so we either have Elbows down, or just a little shoulder touch. Okay, 
So you know the flow. Take it at your own pace. Nice stepping, nice stepping. Or you can take it nice and energetic. Or you can take it into a little hop. Okay, so there's kind of three levels. Nice and controlled, flow, really kind of feel your water. Bit more energetic, but still low impact. Or take it into a hop. And I'll do kind of a bit of all three so we know where we are, okay? Ready in five. Let's start on the right, going forward so we're all the same. So take a second, your right leg is gonna go up first. Ready, three, two, one. Right up, back, step, step. Energetic, back. So it's just a little bit faster, or hop, and hop. Hop, go where you need to go. Slow. If you're losing control, slow it down. Okay, I don't want people falling all over the place. Feel like you're stepping over a big log. Ha! Oh, nearly there. One more. Oh. And even just doing the non-impact one, got my heart rate up. Okay, listen. If you want to do a few of those little steps or a few of those little hops, fabulous. If you don't, be in control. Work what's best for you. Okay, left leg. My left leg is back. Still getting my heart rate back. <laughs> Maybe that's you. Okay, so left leg up, step back, lean bend in the knees, push across, push across, up. A little bit faster pace if you can, or that little hop. Up, step back, side, side. Up, step back, side, side. Up. Slow if you need to. Slow it down if you need to. Listen to your body. Ha, ha, and side, side. One more. Whoa. Oh. All right, it's time to walk around. We're good. We're good. We're moving. Okay. Coming down onto those hands. Plank position, tilting the pelvis into 12, connecting the inner thighs. You might even want to press your feet together to help. Okay, so we're going down onto the elbows and up onto the hands for a little shoulder tap. We want to try and minimize the tilt in the pelvis so I don't want my bum shifting around all over the place. We're twisting, so I've got to really connect your transverse muscles, your lower ribs, if that's feeling a little bit wristy, come and do some of the elbows, so we give it a little break. One more on each side, and then sitting back. Awesome. Round one done. So take another sip of water. We'll be back in a second. Um, this next one you can do with a weight. Uh, you can either have a small kettlebell or, uh, sorry, a small dumbbell or a kettlebell, or you could do this with that weight, absolutely fine. So, I'm just gonna do this with a kettlebell, but I'll show you also if you have a, a dumbbell, how that'll look. So what we'll do is do kind of a nice flow of the movement, and then we'll add the weight if you have it, do a few more as our first rep. 
Um, this one isn't really uh, slow or strong. It's kind of strong and controlled. So it's a bit of a combination of the two. Okay? So our movement pattern is a deadlift. Okay, so I just want you to feel the bending of the um, pelvis over the legs. Now I keep a little bend in the knees here. And you've got to really be careful with this that the upper back doesn't lead. Okay, so often when we go down in here, it's the, it's the upper back that's going down. So what I want you to think of, and you might even have to hold you up, is that it's the sit bones going up and open that leads the movement. Okay, so deadlift. Then we're going to come up to standing posture. We're going to make sure that we don't go into hyperextension. Okay, and then if you've got the weight, the weight's going to come to here, and then we're going to do a little squat. So you might just need to adjust where your feet are. I don't want you to go so, so wide, so it's not like a sumo squat, okay? And then I'm gonna go down into my heel heavy squat. Then I come up, okay? So if you don't have a weight, this is where you're going to be with your hands at your hips, tilting the pelvis up until you feel that little hamstring stretch. Come back up to standing posture, hands to the shoulders. Think of that weight on the shoulders and then sitting back into the heels, okay? Really thinking of your legs going back, not your legs going forward into your knees, okay? Don't worry about how deep it is, okay? So keep going with that if you don't have a weight. If you do have a weight, I want you to try it. So now that I have my weight in front, the shoulders are gonna wanna round, okay? So this is really key that you keep your shoulder blades slightly retracted, as you go down to the deadlift. Okay, then my weight comes to my shoulders, and then I sit down into that little squat. Okay, so weight down, shoulder blades back, tummy on, into the hips, the sit bones open. So you want to feel almost slightly extended in the spine. If you feel flexed anywhere in the spine, then you are not doing it right. Okay, so you want to feel really extended, almost like a little bit of tail up, chest open, okay? So if you've got your dumbbell or your kettlebell, then that's the pattern, okay? And then come back up. Now our second exercise is with the weight. So if you've got a dumbbell of any sort, that would be great. So we're gonna go down with the weight. We're gonna curl, come up, bend the elbows behind the head, okay? Now when I'm here, no popping ribs. Okay, so ribs are in, then I go back up to the chest and down. So if you've got a little kettlebell, then I go up, press behind the head, up, chest, and down. So it's bicep curl, shoulder press, tricep, and back down to the chest. Now if it's too much to go overhead, then just go as far as you can just a little bit up, okay? And then back, down, here, up, down, strong core, so that you're not swaying back and forth, okay? If you're doing the press, just be careful with shoulders, and down, so here, here. You wanna have a pretty decent weight to be able to do that. If your weight is a little bit small, for when we actually do this exercise, I would get a flex band under your legs. Yeah, get a flex band, hold each end, and then you have a little bit more resistance. Okay, so if you, your weight is quite small, then I would definitely take a flex band under your foot, put it on either side. Okay, so those are our two exercises. So let's go to our deadlift. Okay, so hands at the hips, and then hands to the shoulders. Okay, here we go. So deadlift back, shoulders on the back, come back up, standing posture, weight to the shoulders or hands to the shoulders, sitting down, opening the sit bones. So it's nice and controlled. We feel elastic, but we feel strong in our position. And up. And up. Deadlift, hinge of the hips. Open the sit bones, but keep the belly on. Come back, squat, 
Stand up. Don't worry about how deep that squat is, okay? I don't want you bending forward in the squat. I want you to think of that heavy shoulders, weight on your shoulders, backpack, okay? Let's do one more deadlift. And up. And squat. And down. Okay. Lightweight, guys. Put your flex band under your foot. Either side. Okay. Now, you probably with the flex band won't go up over into that overhead press. Okay. So we curl. If you've got that flex band, you might only be going to here. And down. And even if you just have a flex band, that might be all you do. And then if we're going up here, if your shoulders are okay, never go into places where your shoulders do not like it. Okay? So if I go here and I start feeling tense, I'm going to stop there. Back. Now, you got to feel that flex band. Nice, strong core. Even just going to there feels like a lot of work. Just having my shoulders on my back, going to that position. If you've got a decent weight, you're going overhead, it might feel a little bit more of those arms working, but don't go up that high if your flex band doesn't reach that high. Okay? Let's do one more. And up. And down. Nice. Okay. Back to the deadlift. This time, we're going to try and challenge it just with a little bit more pace by doing a little swing, okay? So the deadlift pattern is the same as a kettlebell swing. Okay, now don't do what I just did there, okay? So you can stay with the slow pattern or with your dumbbell. Now if you have a dumbbell, I would hold it more like this with one arm and swap, okay? That would be my preference for that exercise. So it's a little bit stronger, a little bit more dynamic. Okay, if you've got a kettlebell, I would prefer to do a single arm as well. Okay, so slow deadlift, like we did before, or the one arm swing. Here we go. So it's kind of a, a stronger deadlift with an arm lift. Okay, so stay with that slow controlled deadlift pattern and the squat or your swinging arm, which is kind of a squat and a deadlift. So nice, slow deadlift squat. We're coming with me for a few more. Nice, strong tummy. Think of that warrior at the beginning. Two, and one. Nice one. Okay, with our little controlled weight, and now I want you to challenge it, balancing on one leg, okay? So we're gonna do our little bicep, up, overhead, or if you've got your flex band, you've just got your flex band around one foot now, holding your flex band on either side of your weight, and going where you can, okay? Now if you have to tap your foot down, or if you feel better just staying with the double leg, that's cool. Okay, so up, press, overhead, back to the chest, down, up. So we're going to do four on each side, maybe six if you're not going all the way up. So if you're just going to that one, we can do a few more. One more. You're tapping in between, that's fine. You see if you can lengthen the amount of time you're standing on that leg. Nice one. Okay, take a second to reposition yourself to the other side. Get the shoulders ready. Balance or not. Bicep, press or keep going. Overhead, up, watch those ribs. Down, curl. Just to the eyeballs, if that serves you better. You don't have to go all the way up just because somebody else is going all the way up. That might not serve you, okay? Let's do a few more. Is this side better? Is 
get more in control because I just said that I lost control. <laughs> One more. And release down. Very nice. So a little bit more kind of controlled focus. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to come back down. Where are we? We're going to come back down to the floor to do a one arm row. Take some water. Okay, so we're going to go back down to our quadruped and you're going to have your weight in hand if you can. What you also could do is have your flex band on your supporting hand and then just pull with the end of the flex band. So you'll have a very little length so that you can get some resistance there. Now this is a lot of weight bearing on the single hand, okay, so if you have to take little breathers in between. That's fine. What I would say is just find the elasticatedness of your arm. Not the sloppiness, it's not sloppy, but it's elastic. Okay, so you're in the elastic of yourself. Okay, we want to make sure in this position that the tummy is connected. Okay, if it starts sagging, you're going to put more weight on the, the standing wrist. Okay, so we're going to go up quite strong, and then we're going to come down slow. Okay, so we're going to go up strong. Slow down to the floor. Up strong, slow down. Okay, so I'm doing a one arm row. Up, up, slow down. Up, slow down. Now, when I go up, I don't want to go up with the elbow. I kind of feel like I'm going up with the top of the shoulder. Okay, so it's my upper arm kind of up and rolling back. So make sure it's not elbow going up. Okay, because that doesn't have the right pattern. But if I go upper arm going back and rolling, then I get much more core. Okay, so just make sure that's what you do. Other side. Okay, so get into the elastic of your supporting arm. Tummy on. Okay, so we go up the upper arm, slowly down. Upper arm, slowly down. Upper arm. So I'm kind of feeling that retraction of the shoulder blade, whereas if I just take my elbow up, my shoulder blade doesn't retract. So I'm trying to push into the ground a little bit with that supporting arm. Push and release, okay? Take a little shake off the wrist. Now we're gonna try and add the opposite leg. So as you're pulling sharp, the opposite leg is going back. Now we need this to be a strong position not a floppy flowy position, okay? Because if it's floppy flowy, that leg is just going to be dingly dangling in the air. So we need strong core, strong position, boom, slowly back in, okay? So go back to that first arm. We're going to push into the ground gently with that one arm, okay? And then just think about which leg is going to go back. So it's the opposite one to your arm, not the same one with that with my heart, okay? Here we go. So we're going to go, ha! Slowly down. Ha! Slowly down. So I don't want my leg going higher than my bum. I want to kind of hit the bum. Slowly down. Ha! Slowly down. Two. One. And then change sides. So it's just to protect the wrist when we can build some endurance in the wrist. And we can go a little bit longer. Okay? Get your position, get your tummy ready, nice and long, shoulders on your back. Okay, here we go. So opposite arm and leg, take it up, slowly down. Up, slowly down. So my tummy really goes in strong as my weight goes up and my leg goes out and I want it to lift high. I want to feel like it's really strong going out there. Ha! Two more. Ha! And release. Nice one. Okay, we're going to come onto our back. We're going to do a little flowing bridge. And then we're going to do some stronger ones. Okay, so we're going to kind of flow from one to the other for this last bit. Nice and wide across the shoulders, nice and wide across the pelvis. 
taking it through the feet, rolling gently, articulating. Let's feel the softness of this. Even though it might be challenging, try and feel the elastic of the motion, going out, melting through the feet, checking your head, neck, shoulders. Always checking your pelvis is slightly scooped under. So your sacrum is going out and up. Okay? You never want your low back to be going up. Your low back is actually staying long. And then articulate back down. So we're just going to do two of those nice and flowing. Roll. Remember, you can stay with this if you like. This is kind of our cool down. Nice and soft. Check in. How's the low back and the sacrum? Are they tucked slightly under? So I can feel the bum. And articulate down to so stay with that if you like. We're going to do four sharp ones. Now be careful that you stop it here, that you don't stop it in your back. And down. Down. And rest. Okay? So we're going to go flow, softly up, flow, softly down. One more time, roll gently up, and roll gently down, four fast, right down, up, right down, make sure it's through the legs, and one more step, roll, you can stay with the roll if you like, roll back down, roll it up, Feel that it's here, okay? I'm not clenching it, but I'm really letting the support be there. And then when you come up, push through the feet up. Two, one goes down, three, and four. And release. Good, lovely. Come into a little side to side. Have a headlock or a pillow behind your head for here. We shouldn't have needed it with the bridge. And then just let the leg go off a little bit further, tapping a little bit in front, rolling, tapping across a little bit more. You might get some cracks in the back. And you might get a little bit more of a stretch across the bum. You don't have to go big if that doesn't feel good for you. One more on each. Tap across. And then come into the chest. And then just do a very soft little lengthening of the hamstrings, toes to the nose. Not overdoing it. I'm just getting the leg quite comfortable here to hold. And then reaching the heel away from the bum. Trying to keep the pelvis very neutral. So not letting the tail tip up. And just feeling that, maybe opening up that bottom leg so you open up the hip of that side at the same time. And then release back in, change sides. So heel away from bum. Coming back down. Heel away from bum. And back down, keeping the leg in the hip. So you don't need to have the leg too, too, super close, even if it's just here and you're reaching that energy up, and then if you can, take that leg down without the pelvis tipping down, and release. And then just roll onto your side, having the front leg really bent in front of you, and you can either prop your hand up here or lie flat down, and then you're going to grab your ankle in front here on your top leg, and guide the leg behind you might have to hold your laces and tilt your pelvis a little bit 12 as the leg goes back. So you should feel a nice big quad stretch. And then let the leg go in front if you need to reset the hand. And letting the thigh go down towards the wall and then behind. So make sure the leg isn't too high up here, that you're trying to get it level parallel. Now if that feels too much, you can just tap the foot without holding it and then bring it back in front. But just make sure you pelvic tilt as you do it so that you get a little bit of that hip stretch. 
And then I'm trying to kind of bring my foot up towards my bum a little bit so that I get the, the quad stretch. So that goes quite nice. Okay. And then last one on the other side. Okay, so if you can hold on to the leg and then gently pull it back, that's great. If not, just do the active kind of stretch. Tilt the pelvis 12. I know it's hard when the leg is going back because the pelvis wants to tip back with it. Or just tap and reach behind and try and kind of bring your foot to your bum. Just always make sure when you do these little hip stretches that your pelvis is going the opposite way. And two more. If you're doing the slow holding position, you might not do as many as I'm doing here. And stretch that side. Awesome. Well done. Just stand up and see how you feel in your energy levels, how your body feels maybe compared to what it was at the beginning, what parts of you feel like you've woken up, what parts feel maybe more tired, <laughs> but hopefully more energized. Thank you very much. Well done.